next video here, we're going to discuss a, a few more topics here in processing. Uh, begin with talking about drawing order. In other words, when we draw shapes, how do we determine which shape lays on top of which shape? Now, so let's uh, let's begin this discussion here. Uh, and uh, here I have an example uh, from the book. And we're drawing uh, a circle, more, more generally an ellipse, and a rectangle. So here's the code right here. So let me just copy this code and put it here in our sketch window. Okay, now, if you remember, again, size sets the work area, if you like, the drawing area. Uh, ellipse, in this case, draws a circle centered at x equals 140, y equals 0. So that's going to be right on the top boundary of the drawing area. Okay, and this sets the x and y radii of the drawing. This is drawing a rectangle. And uh, so rectangle, uh, 60, 30, 260, 20. Now what is this? What does this do? Uh, 60, 30 determines the coordinates of one corner of a rectangle. And then 260 and 20 determines the, the width and height of the rectangle. Let me run this and just run a few examples here for you to see if you don't remember. Okay, so here we are. Now, if I set, um, let's say this 260 uh, determines this dimension, and the 20 determines this dimension, 160, 30 is this endpoint right here. So, for example, if I just set this to 0, 0, 0, 0 right here, and then I run again, you see this starts right up here at the origin, 0, 0, and draw. So let me draw this back down here, um, 160, 30. 160, 30. OK, now, so first we draw the ellipse. Then we draw the rectangle. And so the rectangle, being second, overlays on top of the ellipse. Now we could switch these. We could make it so the ellipse overlays on top of the rectangle. And the simplest way of doing that is let me just copy this right here, delete it, copy, and then let me put it in here first. So now the ellipse here is coming in first and then the rectangle should go on top of it. So here's our previous drawing. Let's draw this now and see what happens. So indeed you see the ellipse is over top the rectangle in its original position right there. So that's how we determine drawing order. It's not uh, a, a complicated concept. Okay now Shape properties. Uh, some of these uh, could be a bit confusing, a bit weird. So, uh, but let's start off simple set stroke weight. And uh, maybe you've seen this before in drawing programs such as um, Photoshop or more likely uh, Illustrator, Adobe Ill Illustrator, where you're doing drawings. And the stroke weight is basically the width of the line that you're drawing. So let's look at some of those right here. Okay, begin with size uh, 48120. It's the same size we had here. So let me just take this out here. There. Okay, now first we're going to draw an ellipse. And we don't set any stroke at all. So copy. There we go. Now let me just run this. And you see that we have our our circle. Okay, the radii 
uh, in the x direction is 90, the y direction is 90. The center of the circle is 75, 60. Okay, now, um, now I'm going to set a stroke weight. So let me do this here, stroke weight. And the stroke weight is 8. Now notice I'm going to put the stroke weight after drawing the ellipse. And when I do that, run it again, nothing changes. Okay, so when I set a characteristic of something in the drawing, that characteristic applies to everything that occurs after and not before. So set stroke weight equal to 8. So the width of the line drawing the ellipse is now um, 8 uh, according to how we're defining a unit. So let me put this in here. Let me draw another ellipse right here. And there we go. There we go. So here's an ellipse centered at 175.60. So it's on the same Y coordinate as this ellipse same radii, but now the stroke weight is 8. So if I draw that here, you see here I have another circle, but the stroke weight is 8. Now, if you look at this carefully, you'll see that the top is above this line and the bottom is below that line. So it appears that this part, this part of the circle, sort of is the center line in there on that. Okay, now I'll draw it again here, draw another ellipse, and I haven't reset the stroke weight. So here it is. Here's another ellipse, different X position, same Y position and you see that the stroke weight remains exactly as I said it uh, before. Now let me set a new stroke weight, this one to be 20, and then draw another ellipse. So I'll copy both of these here. No. There we go, copy, paste. So I set the stroke weight to 20, draw another ellipse and you see that right in here. Okay, and of course the line in the drawing is much larger. Again, very simple. Okay, now the next item that I want to talk is stroke caps. This potentially is a little bit more confusing, so let me try to explain it. Okay, so let me just get rid of this here. Now this shows three, three lines, and um, uh, so we set our size for a stroke weight 24, and then we draw a line. So let me just copy these, these three lines of code right here, and put them in here. So I have that here, and um, let me draw it. So there we go. And notice this is the normal default procedure. When we draw a line, the ends of the line are, are have curved uh, line caps, as they're called, rounded ends. Okay, now I can make the end square. In other words, I can chop off the line here and here, right in there, right like that. And I do that by setting, keeping the stroke weight 24, and I set stroke cap to square. So let me copy this here and show you what's happening there. So there we go. Now I'll run. And so this is a very similar line, except it's a little bit shorter, and it's shorter because 
what what has happened is the rounded portion of the line has best just been chopped off, giving a squared end like that. Okay, now uh, the next is the stroke cap project. So let's copy this and show you what happens with that. Okay. Now, what happens here is our line is the same stroke width, but here in this line, we've chopped off the rounded part. But in this line, what we have done is we've extended the squared off edge all the way to the end here of the of the rounded part of the stroke. So this line will appear to be longer because the end has been projected out to the edge. And then there's um, there's one more stroke cap round, which is the default. But you could put in stroke cap round if you wanted to set it back to default, which is what I'm going to do right here. Now I'll run the code and you see we're back to what the original line looked like. So remember, this just chops off the rounded part. This extends the square edge to the tip of the two rounded parts. And this brings us back to the default rounding line right there. Okay, so that's stroke caps. Now, one more thing here is stroke joins. And um, so let me talk about this. And I'll leave it at uh, size as 480, 120. There we go. Okay, stroke joins, and that is, if we have lines joining, how do they join? Okay, now here you see two lines joining, if we just draw a rectangle, has squared off edges like this. So uh, here I have stroke weight equal 12, and then I'm drawing a rectangle. So let's copy this. There we go. Run it. And we have this. And it's what we would expect to see if we were writing down the code to draw a rectangle. However, we can round the edges in a rectangle. And this is what stroke join round does. So let me copy this. Run the code. And you see the edges are rounded off. The corners are rounded here, like that. Now, there's bevel, stroke join bevel. And copy this. Stroke join bevel, and I run it. And you see the sharp corners have now been chopped off here. Okay, and then um, the last miter. Now, miter is a term that maybe you won't have a have seen unless you were having unless you've done woodworking or something like that. Let me copy this off. Stroke join miter. Run, and you see we're back to what looks like the rectangle. Now, what the miter does actually is that takes the side, which might be considered to be a square, and then cuts it at 45 degrees and then connects it like that. Now, um, let me try. I think I have a, a piece of code here. File, open recent.
I'm trying to find this uh, I don't see what I'm looking for okay here let's try this no that's more stroke caps oh no I I, uh, I guess uh, let me just try here sketchbook arrow up arrow down stroke cap let me try this okay no that's not what I'm looking for same thing I just had there okay I'm sorry I just can't find uh, find what I was looking for I thought I had it right here but I guess I don't okay nope okay so um, here let me just try one more thing let me pull this up No. Okay. Won't waste any more time looking for that. Um, now, um, uh, so this gives you an example of how we can join lines, set stroke joins. Uh, I've talked about here with the stroke caps, the ends of the line, and then stroke weight. So these are sort of basic uh, characteristics. When we're, when we're using uh, line drawings, uh, how we might manipulate some of the characteristics of the line drawing. Okay, the next thing um, I'm going to talk about um, are uh, doing some colors. There's a few other little things in here. Uh, example on the corner, uh, let's see what is this talking about maybe before. Drawing modes, ellipse mode, rectangle mode, a group of functions with mode in their name change how the processing draws geometry to the screen. In this chapter, we'll look at ellipse mode and rectangle mode. Okay, okay, that's what this section right in here, whole section is about. So we'll deal with that in the next video. Okay, sorry uh, for wasting your time there a little bit at the end. Uh, and then, so until next video.